Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode in Decision Desk HQ State Electoral Profiles. Before we get started, make sure to watch our Ohio and Georgia overviews, which will pop up at the top right of your screen right now. In today's video, we will be covering the Badger State, Wisconsin. The winner of Wisconsin has been decided by less than a percentage point in four out of the last six presidential elections. Joe Biden carried Wisconsin by 0.63% in 2020, over Trump, who had won it by 0.77% against Hillary Clinton four years prior. However, Biden carried the state with a slightly larger margin than fellow Democratic nominees, John Kerry's 0.38% margin in 2004, and Al Gore's margin in 2000, 0.22%. Now, Barack Obama carried Wisconsin by 14 points in 2008 and then 7 points in 2012, and overall, Democrats have won 8 of the last 9 presidential elections in the state. That said, Wisconsin's partisan lean is Republican plus 2, according to the Cook Political Report's Partisan Voting Index, which is a measurement of how strongly the state leans towards one party compared to the nation as a whole, based on how it voted in the previous two presidential elections. Despite Biden's win, Wisconsin voted 3.8% to the right of the nation in 2020, compared to just 2.9% in 2016. Wisconsin's R plus 2 PVI places them on even footing with states like Arizona and Pennsylvania, the latter of which, along with fellow Upper Midwest battleground Michigan, have voted in tandem with Wisconsin in every election since 1988. As for state-specific elections, Wisconsin's governor is Democrat Tony Evers, who is currently serving a second term after exceeding expectations in the 2022 midterms, becoming the first Democratic gubernatorial candidate to win at the same time that his party held the presidency since 1962. After being elected by a meager 1.1% in a Democratic wave election in 2018, Evers' re-election was considered a minor upset, as polling showed his Republican opponent leading in the weeks coming up to Election Day. It was also the first gubernatorial election in the state since 1998, in which the winning candidate was of a different party than the winner of the state's concurrent Senate election. It was also the first gubernatorial election in the state since 1998, in which the winning candidate was of a different party than the winner of the state's concurrent Senate election, which was won by then two-term incumbent Republican Ron Johnson by a margin of exactly one percentage point. However, while both Republican candidates at the top of the ticket underperformed expectations, Republicans did manage to pick up a House seat to expand their majority of the state's congressional delegation to 6 to 2, a majority they have held since 2008. In terms of geography, Wisconsin is an upper Midwestern state, known for its recent status as a battleground and national bellwether. It is the whitest state in the Rust Belt and upper Midwest, but the Democratic Party has significantly overperformed demographic expectations in the state. Democrats build massive margins in and around the city of Milwaukee, regularly winning over 90% of the vote in the city's many predominantly African-American areas. Joe Biden received 92% and 60% of the Black and Latino vote in Milwaukee in 2020, respectively. That being said, the Wow counties surrounding Milwaukee, Waukesha, Ozaki, and Washington are some of the most stubborn Republican suburbs in the nation. While suburbs around Chicago, Detroit, and Minneapolis have rapidly trended to the left, the GOP still piles up margins in these critical WOW counties. Moving on, Democrats' large and growing margins in Dane County, encompassing the city of Madison, are the primary reason the party is still competitive in Wisconsin statewide elections. Trump only won 23% of the vote in Dane County in 2020, and to make matters worse for Republicans, turnout in this county is among the highest in the nation, and has recently increased, as well as is likely to shift further and further in favor of the Democratic Party in future elections. 
However, over the past 15 years, Republicans have been gaining across rural Wisconsin. As historical voting patterns become less important, and these voters start to vote like other lower educational attainment white voters across the country. Trump was able to hold much of the driftless region in southwestern Wisconsin in 2020. Many of these counties, such as Vernon, Crawford, and Grant, were reliably Democratic during the latter half of the 20th century. But Trump maintained his results here from 2016, solidifying a Republican shift in this part of the state. That said, while Republicans win most precincts in rural Wisconsin, Democrats still win a much higher proportion of the vote here than in rural areas in states in the lower Midwest. Democrats perform especially well near Madison, in the Driftless area, and in northern Wisconsin. And on that note, demographically, Wisconsin looks no different than a traditional Midwestern state. It is one of the most white states in the country, and slightly below average in bachelor's degree attainment, both of which favor Republicans. However, as previously mentioned, Democrats simply outperform these fundamental disadvantages. Wisconsin is both less diverse and less educated than Nebraska, for example, a state less than 300 miles away that Trump carried by over 19 points. And that is all for this overview of Wisconsin's electoral politics. We hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel down below and turn on notifications so you never miss another upload. Feel free to also leave a like if you want to see more of this type of content and comment any thoughts, reactions, or suggestions you may have. All comments are welcome and appreciated. We'll see you next time.